How many floors below the ground was a meeting being held that was chaired by Hassan Nasrallah? Who else was there? And how is the Hezbollah leadership going to cope up with the changing developments? Because the next chief that was announced after Hassan Nasrallah barely lasted a few hours. So all this and more in this. Also, we're going to talk about some repercussions happening right here in the Kashmir Valley. What is Mehbooba Mufti doing? And this is going to only start flare up a little bit, I think, but not too much. Anyway, we'll take a look at all these things and more. First, like this video and let's take a quick look at this slide deck. I'll give you all the information that you are looking for. How Israel eliminated Nasrallah. Israel used approximately 15 1-5 bunker buster bombs first to demolish the six to seven buildings above the ground. Known as ground penetration munitions, these bombs can weigh between 2,000 and 4,000 pounds. The bunker buster bombs can penetrate up to 30 meters of earth or 6 meters of reinforced concrete. The bunker buster is loaded with explosives and equipped with a fuse that delays the explosion until after the bomb has penetrated the target. Think about it this way. Supposing there is a reinforced concrete, 3 feet, whatever. And what it does is it will it will not explode while it is penetrating through the concrete. It explodes after it has penetrated through the concrete. So how many floors below was that meeting being held? I'm coming to that in just one moment. To demolish the surrounding roads and pathways extending around these buildings, the bombs were also used to block all escape routes from their basements. Israelis claim it was a high-level meeting between a group of commanders of the IRGC who are overseeing operations in Syria, Lebanon and in Hamas along with senior military commanders of Hezbollah along with Hassan Nasrallah and the meeting was being held 14 floors below the ground which means the claim here that it can penetrate up to 30 meters is false. 30 meters doesn't get you down to 14th floor below the ground. So this is probably a conservative estimate. It went a lot further. They were planning to invade Israel and launch attacks from multiple fronts including Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Lebanon and possibly Turkey. Turkey's role also is now coming to the picture. The Israelis buried all of them together. And Israel has requested Russia to keep off during this phase of the war. They are predicting that Syria may be next, meaning to not associate itself with this. Israel has decided to extend its borders. How far? I am predicting that they will establish a guard zone between their northern border and about 50 kilometers or maybe 100 kilometers into Lebanon and that place will be completely occupied and managed by Israel and nobody can come in or go out easily. The Gaza Strip and the West Bank may be taken over again by Israel and just local level government control will be given to the Palestinians. Now, what happened after that? Well, Hezbollah immediately declared the next commander. His name was, and I'm deliberately using the past tense, Hassan Khalil Yasin. And he just lasted a few hours. He's also no more. Hashem Safiyeddin has succeeded him as the chief now. Hashem is a cousin of Hassan Nasrallah. Hashem oversees Hezbollah's political affairs. In 2017, the U.S. State Department designated him as a terrorist. He threatened major escalation against Israel following the death of Hezbollah commanders. Now, the IRGC commander who was also part of this meeting, his name is Abbas and he is related to Qasem Soleimani. Abbas's son is married to Soleimani's daughter. It is said that the drainage lines of Iran's Khamenei's palace and other basements will be used to send poisonous gas or smoke bombs. Well, we know now that uh, Khamenei has gone into hiding, Sinwar has gone into hiding, and most likely this new chief also has gone into hiding. This is where things stand today. But there are reverberations. Mehbooba Mufti has called off campaigning for tomorrow in support of the slain Hassan Nasrullah. And I'm expecting that there will be some uh, demonstrations in Kashmir Valley, perhaps in the places where Mehbooba thinks she's strong. But this is election time. This could be rhetoric. Well, if the local population doesn't come out in numbers, remember, 
the man who died is a Shia. As to who Mehbuba is, you know, she says, I am this, I am that, I am this and that, I am a big mess, everything. So, what it is, is basically a rhetoric. Maybe she is uh, quoting the Shia votes. Who knows what is going on? So, this is where things stand as far as Kashmir elections go. They are expecting some surprises. We will see what happens. Also, in Kerala, the Syro Malabar Church has come out strongly in support of the Vak bill. Turns out, at least 600 of their properties have been claimed by Vak. So, this is hurting everybody. Basically, it looks like robbery in a subtle way. That is what I think everybody is now realizing. I think Vak in its present form will probably just get abolished. That is what I would like to see. But then I am a, a majority of one. But if you approve of what I am saying, please do so by way of comments. Or even if you think that some other changes have to be brought into the work board uh, amendments, please feel free to do so. There are lots of inputs that have been sent in. We will have to wait and see what happens after that. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.